Welcome, everybody. I have the extreme pleasure to talk to you today about a passion of mine. More continuous futures for performance and DevOps. Who am I? I'm Paul Bruce. I'm one of the directors of customer engineering for Neoload, now part of the Tricentis family. I also chair some of my own events, um, Ali Fest, uh, DevSecOps Days, uh, some of those things around observability and open telemetry. I'm a huge fan of my local Boston DevOps community, and I'm one of the co-organizers of DevOps Days Boston for the past couple of years. And in terms of DevOps in high compliance organizations, well, uh, the IEEE just released a standard that I and a bunch of other people have been working on for a while called 2675. Uh, we're hoping to get that adopted uh, as an ISO international standard soon as well. So at least for today, the scope is performance in a continuous context. But I, I want to tag on to some other themes of transformation uh, in the event. I'll describe what I mean when I say more continuous. Uh, we'll look at how some of the customers that I've worked with are doing that, what approaches and framings are useful to do this stuff, and briefly, how the Tricentis platform might be able to help. So let's start with transformation. Ooh. All the rage these days, right? Yeah, well, I say that jokingly, but in reality, yeah, transformation is the new norm. It's happening in every organization. It's happening in almost every aspect of every organization. It's what's driving a lot of IT changes. It really is the new norm. But like every large system, various parts and pockets abound in these organizations. So it's rare you see major transformations at a day-to-day -day level. Sometimes it's as unfamiliar to us as, say, the universe of the very tiny, the quantum realm. Now, if you don't mind, I love particle physics. It's, it's just food for my nerd brain. So if I can make a quick uh, correlation here. Um, at the quantum level, there are no exacts. Th there's no perfect measurement, no absolutes. It's all statistical distributions. Hey, like performance engineering, right? And subatomic processes, just like the teams and transformations at your organization. Just when you think you know what's going to happen and that you have a standard model pictured in your head, well, something changes. We learn something new and we have to reconsider how our reality actually works. So when I hear people say things like, should we change or not? Uh, we can't afford to change or this is going to take too long or in the very worst circumstances, let's just keep doing business as usual. And eh. consider that the transformation ship has already sailed and you really don't want to be left on some distant island. You cannot afford to do that, not at an organizational level for competitive industry reasons, and not even at a personal or team level, because slow doesn't work for anyone anymore. You can't afford to be on the fence about change. Now, look, I'm, I'm a performance and reliability nerd, right? That's my practice. That's my scope. That's where we're going to head with the rest of this talk. I also listen to hundreds of other practitioners and transformation leaders each year from every conceivable size, geography, and cultural space we can think of. What they say can be summed up as what I call the performance imperative. It is imperative that your systems, software, your hardware, and peopleware are high performance and can scale. Now look, for consumers, right, those users that produce revenue and pay your paychecks, well, if something is slow, it's equivalent to broken. They don't have tolerance for downtime or, or unreliable practices. As just seen in the past year, massive digital expansions, these things were driven by remote work, uh, unemployment processing, well, that was a mess, uh, overwhelming gaps in online education and healthcare management, they abound. We don't need this stuff breaking. And remember, if it works on your machine, but not on mine, and tens of thousands of other people's, it's broken. For business management and leadership, well, this consumer expectation translates into an authoritarian demand that these systems be at their peak performance by default not due to heroics. Superheroes in IT are single points of failure. 
and are toxic to transformation and DevOps culture. There I said it. But still, misalignments like IT prioritizing desktop experiences over mobile performance, it still happens. It's still a big problem since more than half of all the internet traffic is now mobile driven. And like Conway's law suggests, our systems are an outcome of our teams, not just in terms of the communication patterns, but of the functional and dysfunctional behaviors. The responsibility lies everywhere, right? Not just in the QA or subject matter experts. Now for all of us in IT who actually are not superheroes, but just trying to row in the same direction, it becomes an essential and urgent thing to synthesize this demand for a high degree of performance in our systems and processes, because when somebody else's stuff goes down, we need to recover fast. It's not just about what we're building and shipping, right? That's us. You are your weakest link in the chain from a performance perspective. Multi-regionality in cloud providers is built for a reason, right? And cloud providers have this problem too. Things like at AWS, Azure GCP zones, right? They go down, everyone has downtime, but we don't have the luxury of waiting to see if that's us too, because we use them and we know that. The point is everybody has the performance imperative, but what are organizations doing about it? Well, we've seen decades of performance being treated as an afterthought, as a silent.